my god, no, it's raining. Let's listen to the audio. Wait, hi, and welcome to Tea's World. <laughs> Right. I'm not sure if I'm preparing myself out to the world. Year 12 HC advice. I'm gonna run through FAQs that people have asked me. So what is year 12 like? It's quite similar to year 11. Top tips for studying efficiently. I don't know anyone who actually used Anki in high school, but if you did, you're already ahead of the curve. Some people I talked to said it's exposure, so you expose yourself to the content. For example, this person exposed themselves to content like three times. First time is seeing it in class, second time is going through handwritten notes, and third time is making flashcards. Someone else said making Anki flashcards can be time consuming though, so bear that in mind. I think Anki is better for memorizing content. I have some study tips for certain subjects. For English, the biggest thing is to make sure you understand the theme and from there you combine micro techniques. Otherwise, if you just have smaller techniques, they don't really mean anything on their own if you don't tie it to your main message, which is, for example, 1984 is a text that explores the human experience of storytelling and how crucial it is to the human experience. For maths, learn the technique for solving problems. For music, composition, use stylistic features that reflect Australian art and like the 20th century. For sightseeing, I kept practicing and got better. For performance, it's basically like your, you know, your normal exam. Like, how to balance time between tutoring, school, homework and so forth. It's time blocking. Allocate blocks of time for each. Have at least one to two hours every day when you're just resting and doing whatever you want. On the weekends, it's more flexible, but allocate blocks of time where you have to be doing something that's non-negotiable and the rest of the other time you do whatever you want. Another thing with balance is to have clear goals and also a clear to-do list. I know that people have probably said this 10,000 times before. Instead of saying study 1984, three paragraphs for 1984 focused on the theme of storytelling, love and something else. But looking back, I think balancing time and time management all comes down to being fully present and efficient in what you're currently doing. Basically, just fully focus 100% on whatever task you're doing. If you're eating dinner, that's all you're doing. If you're doing your hobbies, you focus on that. If you're doing schoolwork and you're not thinking about anything else. If you're writing your essay, only think about the essay. Don't think about maths, chem, bio, physics or whatever, okay? Question, how to not burn out? I think I burnt out before during my trials, which was quite funny and really great time. So I have a lot of tips I can give you regarding this. First, be able to switch on and switch off fully. Basically work hard, play hard. When you're studying, you need to be 100% focused. Chuck your phone in another room, don't message anyone, lock it in a drawer, fully focus on the task you're completing. Then when you're resting, fully rest and do whatever you want. Don't think about studying or what's next on your to-do list. For my end of phase one exams, I would be fully focused and I turned off all notifications on my phone. But after completing my to-do list or what I deemed was most important. I then allowed myself to rest so I did whatever I wanted. I started watching a TV show which was Fresh Prince of Bel Air. It was, it was a good TV show. Regarding to-do list, it's really good to have one to two priority tasks that you just focus on and as long as that's ticked, you're good to go. And I think I saw something from Karma Medic where he was like, or was it Ali Abdal? I don't know, one of them. They were like, you don't have to tick off everything on your to-do list. I don't know why, but that just resonated with me. So yeah, that's helped me a lot as well. So not everything on your to-do list needs to be ticked off and probably it never will because there's always so many things that you could be doing. Second, set a time limit. So allocate a time where you stop studying. For example, for my end of phase exams in med, I would stop or study at 11 p.m. and then rest, relax, watch TV shows until 12.30 a.m. Everyone is different here, but unless I'm cramming and like I'm really falling behind, I can't maintain studying for four hour blocks. I do what I want. I'm very flexible with my study routine. I study and I stop when I want to stop. I use an online stopwatch to keep track of how much time I spend on focused study, which motivates me. So the Pomodoro doesn't work for me because I would always be checking whether the 25 minutes was up. Yeah. What I found helped instead was having a stopwatch and only timing the times I was fully focused on my study. This was helpful for me because because I could kind of just switch on and switch off anytime. I didn't have to wait until the 25 minutes was over. Physical and mental health. Having strong physical health correlated with strong mental health, a good mood and great focus for me. Whenever I wasn't eating well, you know, sleeping well or exercising, I feel quite lethargic, irritated and unmotivated. This led to procrastinating more, being less efficient and losing focus when I was studying, which then led to burnout. So from that, I now prioritize sleep and aim for seven hours at least. Try and eat more fruits, carbs, proteins. I sit in the sun, just jump around, dance to some good music. I'm aware that I probably sound quite dismissive, and these tips might be quite useless for you. That is completely okay. This is what I found personally works for me. Obviously, it may not work for you, okay? What for? Disconnect and rest. Give yourself entire days off where you have no to-do list, no tasks to finish, no studying. You can do whatever you want these days or even just lie in bed the whole day and watch TV shows. I think these days are super important because it allows your mind to kind of just chill out, which would be good. But obviously, it may not be the best idea to do this like during your HSC. I don't know enough Spanish, so I'm switching to French. Sun. This might be controversial, but I think sometimes burnout is unavoidable, especially if you're doing 
high intensity studying for like six years straight, putting in a lot of hours each day, it's likely you'll experience burnout at least once. The key to this is again, don't feel guilty and understand it's your body telling you to stop and that you need to rest because you are pushing yourself too hard. I think just accept it, cop the L and have a burnout plan ahead of time. Have a system so that when you do feel the beginning stages of burnout, you know what to do to make yourself feel better and try and stop it from getting worse. In terms of, you know, mitigating burnout, other people said, don't focus on study 100%, make sure to time block for hobbies, hang out with friends, take breaks. This person also said, if you really want to make med, there's a lot of time to make med. It doesn't have to be via the high school leaver pathway. And I agree, I've just posted a video on school leaver entry, but stay tuned for future videos on other pathways. Question, when to start doing full HC practice papers? I reckon the earlier the better. If I could go back in time, I exposed myself to these questions in year 11, but only after understanding the theory and how to do the questions. For maths, my weakness was doing questions without even understanding the technique. Practice papers are good for building speed, accuracy, and simulated exam conditions. So before you do full practice papers, understand the technique, then sort the past papers into question types, which you can tackle by untimed practice. Then when you've mastered that, move on to full papers under timed conditions. Question 10 versus 12 units. It depends on the type of person you are. If you are confident in 10 units, then go with that. If you'd like some backup, then go with 12. If you'd like the option of dropping extensions, then pick, I think, 11 or 12 units because it gives you some choice. And if you're not feeling it, you can just drop. Note that even if you do do 12 units, you may have one really bad subject that just won't count, which is essentially the same as doing 10 units, except you have more exams and you're more stressed. So I did 12, but um, one of the subjects I did, I absolutely hated back in the day. So basically, I pretty much did 10 units worth of work because I fully neglected that subject. However, I still had to sit the exams, which was a really sad time. Questions. How do I know what degree is right for me. I went with my gut. I went through the USC guide and just looked through the list and went yes or no. And I said no to all of them except for four options. Med, dance, psychology and music. Another way to approach choosing your career pathways, think of your strengths. Or you can think, do you like having to network and meet people or not really? It's hard being forced to essentially make a choice when you're just 17 or 18. So some people will take a gap year before uni. Other people go into uni, realize the degree that they chose isn't for them and switch to something else. The key is to do what feels right for you because at the end of the day, the person who's going to be working in that field and doing that job for decades isn't going to be you know your parents your friends your relatives your teachers or whatever it's going to be you so make sure you choose what you actually want to do what advice would you give to year 12 students about medicine applications and the hfc regarding med applications i've answered that several times which you can check out here unsw med applications 3c how to get into unsw medicine year 12 entry in terms of the hfc i'll answer right after this question when i talk about my year 12 regrets but for now have a clear to-do list on what you want to achieve set strong deadlines for these tasks i know it's hard but spend more time on the subjects you're weakest at rather than the subjects you're already strong at try to get seven hours of sleep every day but that may be really difficult because of you know, scheduling and if you have to travel to school. Make sure you do fully simulated timed exam papers. Even though they take up a sizable chunk of time, they're one of the best ways of priming yourself for HSC trials and the actual HSC itself. You may be pushed to your limit during the HSC trials, so make sure you have a good support network and systems in place in case you burn out. And make sure you have everything ready study-wise, that you're prepared and that you've studied adequately before trials comes around. For instance, for advanced English, I didn't have any memorized paragraphs for my essays at all. I only had quotes, which I was still memorizing the day before my trial, and I hadn't practiced doing full papers properly, which I really regret because I did super duper that on my HSC trial for English. Hey, so whatever. So now that we've covered all the academic stuff, let's talk about my year 12 regrets. If I could go back, this is what I would tell myself, this is what I would change, and this is what I think would have improved my life in year 12. Let's get into it. My regrets, many of them, well, not studying efficiently. I would time myself and be unfocused, scroll on my phone, basically be distracted. It would have been better to study less, but at 100% intensity each time, like I said earlier in this video. Make sure that you can switch on and switch off. This will also come in handy when mitigating burnout and will help you achieve balance in your life. Two, sleep. I feel like everyone says this, and I know it's so much easier to say than do but you really got to sleep sometimes i'd stay up to do the assignments it's definitely hard when you're juggling everything and it's also definitely easier if you live closer to school so if you live further away you may just have to cop that l but if i could go back i'd definitely sleep more three is not taking more pictures it sounds very very superficial but too bad it's what i think and you can't change that but yeah my biggest regret is not having a disposable in high school because it's unlikely i'll ever get to wear my school uniform again and the vibes were just immaculate especially in the music rooms immaculate vibes four not talking to people more <laughs> that rhymes maybe besides uni high school is one of the last places i reckon where you get so much time to hang with people whether that's out of choice or because you're forced to because you share the same classes the thing is that you're seeing people every day that it's super easy to make plans with friends and just everyone around you compared to uni where schedules are different especially if you're doing different courses or at different unis or even in different states you basically go from seeing your mates every day to maybe once a week if you're lucky if you're unlucky once a term once every six months so yeah keep that in mind five you're not asking for advice and you know talking to people around me more have more life experience. Teachers, careers advisors, mentors, six, 
not jumping into opportunities more and trying out for things because I was afraid of failing and not getting it. Especially for extracurriculars. It may not have had a big impact relative to now, but I think it would have allowed for much more varied and exciting experiences if I tried out for things more like leadership roles and sports. In high school, and I think even now, the fear of failure is just something that acts as a barrier to bettering yourself, to better experiences, new experiences and opportunities. I guess a question to ask ourselves every time we say no to something is, am I saying no because it's not good for me, because it's not serving me? Or am I saying no because I'm afraid because it's an uncomfortable environment because it's out of my comfort zone I'm unfamiliar is it because I'm afraid of failure if it's the latter reason maybe reconsider because you may be avoiding an experience that could potentially change your life you never know seven not being more open to people and new experiences similar to what I just said I think if or when you do this you are at risk of closing yourself off from experiences that could have been formative impactful and potentially life-changing eight not being more present and just in the moment I feel like at each stage of life it feels tough busy but thing is it's generally easier and less stressful relative to what coming next in your life stage when you go from kindergarten primary high school to uni to the workforce i wish in high school i was more present i focused on the small moments more and appreciated things more especially the people around me just the tiny things it just makes you do it like fully immerse yourself in the moment and be present in whatever it is that you're doing nine complaining <laughs> looking back in high school i think i was very very negative i complained quite a lot which i regret i feel like your mood and experience is highly shaped by what happens but also by your outlook on life how you approach things in the situation and whether you go into something looking for flaws looking for what's wrong or whether you go into it just fighting or you know looking for the positive finally and most importantly I'm not sure if i'm going to put this in the video because it's too deep in high school i wish i was more comfortable in my own okay skin. i don't know why i sound so cringy here but basically what i'm saying is i wish i was more comfortable in my own skin accepted myself flaws or la di da di da you get the drill okay cool if i was more comfortable with myself earlier on i would have gone for more things even if i thought i wouldn't get them i would have tried harder i would have tried to get rid of my fear of failure i would have put myself out of my comfort zone and i would have just tried to have been myself but also things take time everyone does things at a different pace and maybe this is the pace that worked best for me we'll never know so that brings us to the end of this video year 12 advice hope i answered all your questions and i just know that you enjoyed my tips hope you enjoyed me burying my soul out to the world but like comment subscribe turn your notifications on and i will see you very soon bye